Hey guys, I'm just writing a description real quick. Okay, so um, guys, I am uh, so excited tonight. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, this is going to be a, a very valuable discussion this evening. Uh, as you guys know, I have created um, a new brand of my business entitled Develop the Artist Within You. And uh, we want, we aim to provide value to singers um, that are independent artists and who even may not be independent artists who may be signed. And so what we want to do is empower you and educate you in every way that we can uh, so that you can be knowledgeable when speaking with other professionals and really understand what I call the business that pays you, right? You want to understand it because there's a lot of business people around you that understand your business and you want to be empowered to understand your business as well. And so as part of that, this evening, we are going to be talking to the lovely Miss uh, Margie Scott, who is an entertainment attorney, and she absolutely loves talking about contracts and copyrights and all of that good stuff um, that so often uh, we as independent artists know not enough about. And so uh, we are excited about this conversation and we are just gonna dig in. Oh, and you guys are free to actually ask her questions. Uh, you can come on the live, ask her questions, put some um, in the comments. Uh, she will be here for the next hour. Um, you know, giving general information and as much information as she can give you without it actually going into a true consult. So without further ado, we are going to go ahead and add her. Hello, Margie. It looks like I'm upside down. You look sideways. Okay. Oh yeah, with I with IG you can't um you can't do landscape mode with IG. Okay, no worries. Perfect. Good. Perfect. Figure this out. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Make sure this is together. So like I was saying, guys, we have a real attorney on the phone. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, I want to thank you so much, Delisa, for having me. Um, it is definitely a pleasure. Um, I want to tell everyone hello, hello. Um, if you don't know me yet, my name is Margie Scott. I am originally from South Carolina, um, a small town co close to Myrtle Beach, Charleston area called Salters. Um, I have uh, I currently reside in Louisiana now. Um, I'm licensed to practice in South Carolina and Indiana. Um, I've done some work. I lived and done some work in North Carolina, D.C., um, Louisiana, South Carolina. I've handled some contracts for entertainment attorneys out of Louis, um, excuse me, out of Atlanta, um, as well as L.A. and New York. Um, I've been an attorney since 2016. I'm married. I have one child, a beloved son, yes. um, the YouTube star in himself. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, as hobbies, um, I got into the entertainment um, business because of my passion for music as well as entertainment. Um, I grew up playing all types of sports from softball, track, basketball. Um, we were on you know, a very great team as well as um, I always sang in, sang in choirs. Um, I played viola, violin, um, clarinet, piano. Um, and I'm learning to play I have hobbies. I'm learning to play the drums as well as the guitar now. So, um, and I'm singing. <laughs> um, so that's how I got into it. Um, I always knew I wanted to be a lawyer. So I kind of, you know, combined the two. Um, I just want to start off with a little disclaimer that um, I am a lawyer. But I'm not your lawyer. Um, anything that I say tonight should not be taken as legal advice. Every situation is going to be different. Um, please don't listen to anything that I say and say, oh, I have the answer uh, for my questions. 
and I can just use that. No, I really encourage you to consult with an attorney. Um, and also, I am based in the United States. So if you are um, in another country, um, I just want to let you know that everything I'm talking about is general U.S. law. Um, so without further ado, I guess that is a good start. So, okay, awesome. Thank you so much for that introduction and letting us know your background. So my first question is, uh, you've managed artists, correct? Managed, no. Managed, so no. I, what? what? I, I will say this, that manage is a term that is, the industry has specific terms. So when you say manage an artist, um, that means that you will be um, accepting calls for them, booking their schedule, handling their schedule. No, I don't, I've not done that. Um, and those, uh, those comes with uh, different types of agreements. So um, most of the time in the industries, lawyers try to stay in their lane. Um, you don't want to confuse the lane. And there are certain states that is illegal, like L.A. You can't be an agent and a lawyer. You have to pick one. There's laws in the states for that, as well as New York. So, no, I've not managed. OK, so then so my next question was going to be, what is kind of the biggest issue or the most repeated issue that you've seen? with your clients, with your artist clients? Like what is one thing that artists don't seem to understand or the trouble that they always run into? Yeah, so I, excuse me, I'll tell you this, I get more calls than anything for someone saying, someone stole my work. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, and most of the time, I think what artists are doing now because everything is online, they're sampling, they're sampling music and then they're also shopping their music to people um, and when I say shopping, that means that you are sending out your song or your music or your recording blindfoldly to other artists, to other uh, to record labels and companies and saying, hey, I, I want to be famous. And so later on, they hear their <laughs> they hear their stuff being played on the radio that something sounds similar. And they're like, oh, my God, such and such stole my stuff. And so they're the biggest problem is. They're putting their uh, craft out there without protection. So how? So th I have so many questions. This is such a rabbit hole. Okay. So how does? And there's so many basic questions I wanted to ask. But now that we're here, so for the artist who is inspired by another person's work and wants to sample it, what are the? Because for example, I do covers, right? But I don't sell those covers, and I don't sell those covers because. To me, I'm sure I would have to get some sort of clearance, right? Mm -hmm. So so is it true that the law is if I want to make money off of something that has been sampled, I got to make sure the other person makes money first. Like if I plan on selling it on iTunes or making anything off of it, is that how that works? So what I will tell you, so let's back up a little bit. So I, that is a very difficult question. And let me make sure, and why it's not difficult, it's complex. Right. All right. So I think that I can get into a little bit more simpler things and then we tie in your question. So don't let me miss it. OK, so let's talk about what uh, copyright. Let's get everybody up on the same page. Yes. So first, you have to do what you need to understand is what is a copyright um, and why do I need it? And the first thing I just want to say it like this is when you are um, serious about your craft, Is, am I still here? Yes, I hear okay. you. So when you're serious about your class, you need to learn um, industry language, industry terms. You want to talk um, very much as if you've done your research and you know what you're talking about. Because as an artist, you are a business. You have to treat yourself like one. You don't want to start when you get with the record label. Um, and even with the record labels, um, you don't want to just have contracts floating around about you. And you don't know what they say. You don't know how to understand them. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is this term. It's a term called intellectual property. Intellectual property is the property of a mind, of your mind, of your intellect, right? Um, and it becomes valuable when it leaves your mind and it gets fixed into a tangible medium, right? So that tangible medium could be paper. You could draw something. That tangible medium could have been typing out. You could type out a book or a poem. That tangible medium could have been um, the sound recording that you sung your song on. Um, so when you fix something into a tangible medium that, that is the property of your mind or your brain, um, then um, you start to come into this property and you create a bundle of rights. Um, 
that one of those rights could be the copyright, a trademark, a trade secret, or a patent. They all fall under intellectual property. Where art, the thing that artists are mostly going to use is a copyright. So you want to know if you need a lawyer, you want to know the right thing to ask for. So let me tell you what a copyright is. Um, so basically, a copyright is intellectual property, again, that protects original work of authorship. Um, and it once it's fixed, again, into an intangible medium, something that you can hold, touch, feel, listen to, see. All right, so examples of copyrighted, copyrightable work would be paintings, photographs, sound recordings, computer book programs, books, poems, plays, choreography. Um, all wow. Wow. It's copyrightable. Yes. So, so choreography is copyrightable. So like Janet Jackson's dances for like control, she can copyright that. So if someone else did it, she would like, that's crazy. Correct. Um, and what copy, give it, having copyright ownership in something, what it does is it gives you the right to reproduce it, to sell it, to copy it, to license it. And that's getting back. That's going some to your question. Okay. Say, okay taking someone else's work, you know, what do I need to do with it? Because I'm singing over it. Well, if you took their beat, they didn't give you their beat, you know, to, to necessarily use. They may have licensed their beat to you. So, yes, they still own that. You may have made a work on, with their beat, kind of collaborated with it. So they have some type of ownership. And that's very, um, it's very touchy feeling, you know, and, and that's why you definitely want contracts that we'll talk about later yeah. because you know what you own versus what they own before you get into those things. So yes, um, those and more can be copyrighted. Now copyright is owned the moment, the moment that something happens. So as me and Delisa are speaking live right now and the live is being recorded, the copyright is being made immediately right wow. there's n yeah there's nothing we can do about that there's nothing you have to do to own your copyright except make it what you need a copyright registration for is protection right so you register your copyright in the united states at something called the u.s copyright office it's housed at the library of congress if you've not been there in dc you definitely owe yourself a trip uh <laughs> You do. Um, but uh, that's where I've worked there. So um, I, I went to D.C. I was while I was uh, took a break a little bit during law school and worked there at the U.S. Copyrights Office. So I got to see firsthand how these applications are processed. You can apply online or by paper. I suggest online. And basically there's examiners there that will review your work and try to make sure that no one else has it. Other names, things aren't similar. And then they'll issue a registration. With that registration, now you have the right to license out that work. You have the right to distribute copies. So that goes to like distribution. When we think about distributing, our, um, we have the right to um, perform it. So we want our song to be um, in a dramatical play and we want our song to go um, and be placed in musical works, to be placed on TV, to be parts of jingles, um, or be creating jingles, um, all of that. So you have the you have certain rights and protections that come when you copyright your work. Now, what often happens is people come to me and say, I need a trademark when they actually need a copyright. So my question is like the word bootylicious, can is that is that something that could be trademarked? Mm -hmm. So let me tell you what a trademark is, and then I'll be able to tell you whether you can trade. And I'll kind of tell you a little bit about um, what some of the requirements are. So trademarks are definitely different from copyrights. Remember, copyrights are protecting things, works of authorship. A trademark is when you're seeking protection for a word, a phrase, a symbol, a design, or a combination of them all. Right. So when you see a Coca-Cola can um, and when you see the symbol of the Coca-Cola, it, it tells you that that is Coca-Cola. Right. So you're selling it, it protects goods and services being sold in commerce. So when I see a logo, when I see a symbol, when I see a phrase, I should know that I should expect or be guaranteed that this is the product or the service that I'm getting. I don't want to pop open a Coke and taste a Pepsi or taste a root beer. Yeah. I don't even want to pop over open a Coke from Coke and taste a great value brand, 
right? It tells me that what I'm getting is original. So let me tell you a little bit about this. Um, the sound in sound motion pictures where when it's coming on and that tiger roars, that roar, that's that's a trademark. Nobody else can get that because that roar tells me that it goes with that company of a mo- in the motion picture. Tiffany Blue, when you see that blue. Um, it's trademark, which means nobody else can use it. So it's giving you exclusive rights to use something. Um, you don't really want that in a trademark. You don't really want that in a song per se. Well, you can't do it. But what I'm saying is you may want other people to be able to copy, produce your song. You cannot do that with someone's trademark. Um, it can be a combination. So when you think about Nike, if I see the Nike swoosh, mm-hmm. I don't the word. I know that that's the Nike brand. But mm-hmm. if I also see the words Nike, I also know that that's the Nike brand. So that's the combination. And then sometimes perfume. So all kind of things that be trademark. But the thing to remember is that it's protecting a business brand or a good or a product or a service. Right? That's not necessarily a performance. That's not a song. It doesn't seem to really fit. All right, so you need those more with your businesses. If you're filing an LLC, some com- some artists have something called loan out companies. Um, they're LLCs, and you pretty much sign things instead of signing in your personal name. Um, but um, so when you think about building a business, business or a brand as an artist, that's what we want to think about um, trademarks. Now, what was your question? Oh, who, I'm sorry. Who me? Yeah, your question regarding trademarks. What was my question regarding trademarks? So like trademarking a phrase i was saying like bootylicious mm-hmm. so the only way booty, the way uh trademarks um you have to be able to again tie it to a good or a service oh um, if, okay i missed that part right so if you go to chick-fil-a you'll see certain things like chick-fil-a fry or the chick-fil-a sandwich or the real chicken sandwich and sometimes on certain people's menu They'll have the register. It's an R with a circle. Yeah. If you see that, it's a specific phrase that's attached to a good or service, and no other restaurant or other person can use it. So if Bootylicious can be attached to something. Ah, that makes. Okay. I, somehow, the first time you explained it, I missed that. No, it's fine. Okay. If Bootylicious can be. What happened? I don't know what happened. Hopefully she comes back because I'll just say, um, oh, is this? Okay, she's back. She should be coming back. Okay. Hey. (laughs) Okay. So, yeah. All right. So what's your next question? My my, my next question was, um, okay, so... I was I was in a group with musicians and we were talking about copyrights and I said, you know, every song actually needs two copyrights because there's the copyright for the work itself and there's a copyright for the actual recording. So, for example, from what I understood, uh, Aretha Franklin, you know, singing that that Adele song, we could have had it all or something like that. Rolling in the deep. Right. Aretha owns that recording, even though if Adele wrote it, I'm not sure if she did, she owns the lyrics and the melody, like the actual song. But that recording isn't, like that's its own thing, right? That's not Adele's, Adele doesn't own that particular recording of the song because right. she's not part of it, is that correct? So so how does how does that work in, what do songwriters need to know you know what I'm saying? When they only copyright the musical work or if they only copyright the the, pro- the production, the, the produced work, like what what loophole are they creating if they only do one or the other? Well, they're not creating a loophole. They're actually creating a hole to fall in. <laughs> okay, that's what I meant to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What blind spot? Okay, so let's, so let's talk about what all is in that. So basically... Um, everything in a song that you need to think about copywriting and that an artist may or may not be able to own. Um, so a song first starts out either with the notes, like a musical composition. When you think about sheet music, mm-hmm. that's copyrightable. 
right? The paper, the music, the notes, what you read, what you see, all right? Then on top of that, the artist may have a gift where they can write lyrics. If so, the lyrics is copyrightable. When you go on YouTube and you Google the lyrics to a song, it looks like a poem, right? That's copyrightable in itself, right? So then when you put the sheet music and the lyric together and someone takes their actual voice and they go sing it, the tangible medium is no longer paper. It's not a poem or it's not a uh, written lyric and musical composition, right? Which is copyrightable on its own. Now it's a vocal recording and you're creating a master recording. It, it's fixed into some type of drive or it, that sound recording in itself with everything compiled together is a totally separate copyright, <laughs> copyrightable work. And you need all of them copywritten. Um, so if you do not own the comp music compositional part, of course you are licensing, getting permission and borrowing from um, a publisher or whoever owns the work to in turn then go and create your master or your sound recording. Um, so they're they're different and you need all of them okay so then let's say somebody wrote a song and that i record it i produce it record it that person it has nothing to do with the production other than i, I took their song so mm -hmm. when i'm doing the copy so when i'm doing the copyright as the singer producer of the song do i add that other person's name to this rec sound recording well, it could, it's, one is going to depend on your agreement. Sometimes the copyright office asks for agreement. So because um, to figure out what the agreement looks like. So if they gave you permission to create it, if they didn't, you have to say in your copyright ap applications, who are all the original works of authorship? Got it. So I don't want to get into because everyone's agreement is going to be different. But whenever you're vocalizing, laying tracks, the producer and all those things, they're going to ask who all has the little pieces of this, this copyright and you have to report it. Now, if your agreement is such that you own everything, then you register it as if you own everything. <laughs> so question that. Thank you. Next question. If you if I co-wrote something, let's say there's five of us in the room and we're doing a writing session and. Four of us contributed, but that fifth person is just like there saying, yeah, that is good. Yeah, that, they're not really contributing, but it's a writing session with all five people. How do you split that song? Is it automatically all five people get an equal share? Do you say, hey, man, you wrote a whole verse and a chorus. I only wrote three words in, in the bridge. So I think you should get whatever percent of this. I should, you know what I mean? How does that work? So this is where contracts are very, very important. Okay. And all artists need to engage in contracts and seek counsel before they even start. Um, so in a situation like this, it's something called a songwriter collaboration agreement or singer-songwriter agreement. And that's when two or more songwriters agree in advance to write a song together. And in that agreement, you can determine who's going to have what ownership, you know, in different parts before you even get started. So you can list out the details of your collaboration with each other. Um, now, there's also called a something called a split sheet, um, a songwriter split sheet, and it's different. It's an agreement that identifies each person who contributed to a song and established ownership percentage among them. Um, but the songwriter collaboration agreement is going to be a lot more detailed. So those are two agreements that you want to think about. And those are two things that you should. So, so would you say that a good practice is to have those conversations before you ever create the song? Correct. Because the way the way copyright works is the minute you scribble on the paper, the copyright is head like it's it, registration isn't a thing. Um, and so the copyright law is that is if, if you don't have an agreement, the law will generally just assign everyone equal ownership. You can't say that, well, someone only contributed 2%. Well, if you don't have agreement, everybody owns it, split it. Wow. Ooh, I know some United States. Yes. <laughs> 
I can I can imagine some friendships went sour over that. I mean, yeah. I mean, everything has to be um, done, you know, in agreement. Even when it comes down to bands, if you if you are an artist and you're looking to collaborate with other people, as far as well, I want to be in this group. We're gonna sing together. We want to be in a band. There's agreements for that. Um, you're basically forming a partnership, and you need to come um, together with a band agreement, and you need to find out, okay, where, at, who's gonna own the band name. Right? What happens if we break up? Who gets the majority voting decision? If it's two of us, if it's four of us, if it's an even number, then how are we going to make decisions among the group? Who gets paid what? Who's going to own the equipment? Who's going to own the, the keep or own the um, the copyright or the intellectual property? Um, so those are, those are contracts. You need a contract for everything. There shouldn't be a part of you that's not contracted. Um, if you sign someone to be your your agent to help you get booked. You need a contract for that. You know, you need to know what is your agent going to get paid. You want to make sure that you're, they're actually signing you and giving you gigs, right? And you're actually getting yourself out there. Um, and then um, you also want, if you have a manager or a booking manager, um, you need an agreement for that. Um, if you are uh, saying you're going to go on your own tour, and you're going to perform. Um, you need an agreement. Uh, you need tour agreements. You need location agreements. You need licenses. Um, Synchronization. You need all kinds of licenses. Okay. Okay. So I have a question. Yeah. If I give an idea for a song, if I say, you know what, I want you to write a song for me that is talking about like happiness and sunshine and green trees. And I kind of want it to sound a little bit like this, like you're giving direction to a songwriter. Does that make you a songwriter? If you're giving direction, here's what I if say. If you're given the idea of the song, do you then partly own the song? Cause you could say the song wouldn't. Okay, okay, so scenario, scenario, scenario. Um, Tank with his that song maybe I deserve, and he said it was based on my, my ex girlfriend. Pretty much, you know, he she gave him that scenario, and she's the one that said, you know what, you deserve to, you know, for you deserve all these things, and that's how he wrote the song. And he kind of joked and said, yeah, she came back and basically said she wanted to own part of the song because I admitted that she was the inspiration for it based on what she said. Well, you always want to be careful how much inspiration you use. Uh, you always want to try to be original. Um, having said that, we're all inspired for something. Um, I just say this. I can't really give a yes or no um, just to be on the stage. Yeah, so forget the tank so, situation. Let's just t say I'm telling somebody I want I, I want it about the clouds and the sun, and then they write the song. Am I part owner of that? But let me tell let me tell you something. So the your your intellect, your thought process has left your mind. Um, and the 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 lesson out of that that I would tell artists is that you also need something called an NDA, a non disclosure agreement. Um, before you start talking about things, whether it's business, whether you could say, oh, I have a plan for my stage to look like this on tour and then somebody else go do it before you. And they say, oh, my gosh, that was that was the best stage ever. And I'm only booking this person because they know how to create a great stage. You're like, wait, I gave that idea. So you want to protect your ideas by uh, before you start talking about that. Because it could be hard. You you may feel like you own it. You may have some type of rights or not, right? But there's nothing you can do about it if you didn't protect yourself. So I would get a non-disclosure agreement and I would have that signed before I speak with people about my ideas. And well, I'm not really... Okay, no, no, no. Okay, I guess what I'm saying is I'm telling a songwriter to write the song for me. I'm the artist and I'm going to sing the song about the trees and the sun and all that. But I'm not like, I'm not a writer. They're the writer. So I'm like, can you write this song for me? Am I, am I automatically co-writer? I don't know about that. So what I will say is if they're over there writing the song, you, you probably, you know, you're, you'll be more of an owner if you have a work for hire agreement. <laughs> So I'll put it to you like this. This is the same thing. We hire photographers all the time. And we say, can you take a picture? Photographers say, photographers say yes. You hire me. I'll go take a, a picture of you. All right. So you can pay. You, you know that the picture belongs to me. Well, the way the copyright law works is 
copyright is on the minute something happens. So when the photographer snaps the photo of you, they have original ownership. If you don't have an agreement and an assignment of the copyright interest, if you didn't get that, then they still own it. You can use that photo. They can allow you to use it. You can do whatever. But when it comes down to registering that copyright, if you did not snap that photo, you do not own the photo. So you need protection around when you're collaborating or when you're doing things like that. You definitely want some agreement because copyright happens instantly. It's like, whoop, there it is. <laughs> I want to I want to go back I want to go back to talking about the the double the written work and the produced work. What is the hole that cuz you said you could fall into a hole. You're creating a hole you could fall into if you don't get both. What is the danger of not getting both copyrights for every song every time? Um so the danger I'm sorry I thought um so the danger of that is so most artists basically use other people's work. I forgot the other, I'm trying to think of the other term that you told me. I was like, no, you're about to fall in a hole. I'm sorry. Oh no, 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 no. I said, what's the loophole? And you were like, no, you're going to just fall into a hole. You're creating a, you're creating a hole, not a loophole. Yeah. So basically you definitely want to register both of them because they are different. So if you just have your song out there, your master recording, or your sound recording, and um, you just have that copyrighted. Well, now if someone infringes upon the lyric, if they just take the lyric or the music compositions and the notes and go, you know, place it with another song, yes, you own it. But what can you do to enforce someone from stopping it because you don't have the registration? Um, so that's the loophole. Is the loop the, the the pit is feeling like you're the pitfall is feeling like you're fully covered um, because you uh, registered the composition. That's the pitfall. The pitfall is being um, misled and, or having the wrong information to feel like, okay, well, everything's here, so I own everything. You know? Or I have everything protected because I did the thing that goes on the radio. I, I, I um, copy wrote the thing that people can hear, and so they should be able to hear all that, the beat, the lyric. The music, whatever. So everything's covered, and but but it's not. It's not. That's the because someone could take all the lyrics, change the melody, put in a whole new beat, and it would be harder for you to prove that it's yours or to get ownership of that. So you, I wouldn't say it's harder if you have something that's date stamped um, that shows that you created it first. Um, it's harder in the fact that you you spend more legal fees doing things incorrectly, mm -hmm. trying to fix messes. Um, that's that's expensive. People say, "Well, lawyers are expensive." No, cleaning up a mess is expensive. <laughs> you haven't even seen because at that point, you know, you have to file proceedings. You have to file their support costs in addition to attorney fees. There's attorney fees, court costs separate things <laughs> uh, so um so that that's that's the problem you know um you just definitely want to do it right on the on the front end now it, it won't mean that you do, don't own the work if you have fixed it into that tangible medium again it's automatically owned but copyright registering your copyright gives you the opportunity to sue and recoup damages Without that, um, you are in a uphill battle in the United States. So prior to about three years ago, they just had a, a law come out about three years ago. The courts in the United States were split. Um, so basically, 50% of the federal courts, because all of this is federal law, copyrights and trademarks are federal law, um, basically. Um, but 50% of the courts were split and they said, if you don't have a copyright, your copyright registration, it's fine. You can go ahead and sue and file your copyright registration simultaneously mm. and let's figure out what they did. Now, um, there was statutory protections to say that you could, you couldn't get, so the stat, there's statute or law that says, Okay, if you file your copyright within a certain period of time before putting your work out there, you automatically get to recoup 
certain certain amount of damages. So it's a it's a perk to file your copyright early because you don't have to prove your damages. You don't have to prove how many times people sold the record and mm -hmm. made off of it. You get a certain amount of damages for each infringement. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. But if you don't register, oh, but if you do, okay, yeah. But if you don't register, you have to actually try to figure out damages and accountant and all of that. But anyway, so the courts were split. Half of them said that you don't need a copyright registration, just file the lawsuit and file your copyright application. The other half said, oh no, you, you have to have a copyright application in order to um, in order to file a lawsuit. Well, three years ago, about three years ago, the court, they made a unanimous, unanimous decision and they have now laid the, uh, uh, leveled the playing field. They said 100% across the board, no copyright application, you cannot sue. So that's why it's very Ooh. important. Go ahead and get your, yeah. So some you can be looking at someone infringing on your work, and you cannot file a lawsuit unless you have have that registration in your hand. And that um, takes months. Yes, when you file your application prior to COVID, it was about eight months. If you filed it online, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's about eight months for your. Um, for your application to be reviewed and you actually get a certificate back. So can you imagine your court case being held up for eight months or you're not you being can, able to file? You can't even file for eight months. They just having a good old time eating steak and lobster. Yeah. <laughs> your work. And taking just, shows, taking dates. Yeah. And that's, and that's pre-COVID. Yeah. COVID, everything's backed up. Somebody so, asked a really great question. Trevon Jamal asked, so without an agreement in the beginning, when recording a vocal track, does the singer or engineer who hits record own the track? Mm. So that that's a complex question, and I'm answering this question assuming you're in the United States. He is. Um, okay, so the vocal artist, um, I think it would be a collaborative agreement, and everyone could potentially have some ownership without... Um, an agreement. If you don't get them to sign a work for hire prior um, to working on the work, then yes, the copyright affixes immediately the minute they open their mouth, the minute the person hits play, um, and everyone will have some type of collaboration ownership rights to it. So an engineer could own part of the song because they pressed record and helped you record it? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking more of the producer. I'm thinking like. No, he's producer. saying like literally the engineer. Um, what, why are they considered to be part of the creative process? You know, that's a good question. I'd have to get back to him about that one. I mean, um, I don't, I don't even think it's, I don't even think engineers think like that. Like, oh, I own the song because I helped you record it. No, they don't. But, and, you know, I'm trying to think what all, they, what can happen in a studio. Um, can they change the voices in the studio? Can they edit in the studio? Um, so I don't know about the engineer, but I, I know your vocals, your drummers, your pianists, um, your guitarists, your background singers. Yes, they all have a fair play for sure. Awesome. So the next question, if I include that I created the sound recording lyrics and music as well as the instrumental and vocal, all on one copyright. No, you're not covered because you can't, you could say that you're the original and all of, okay, I see what she's saying. Like, could you say that you're, she's the original author and all of that on the, so she's still asking, can I just get away with one copyright? <laughs> no, you have to copyright the work itself. You have to copyright the lyrics. So that means nobody can walk around Nobody can take the lyrics of, hello, it's me. I was wondering if after all these years you'd like to meet, put a dance beat to it. And then all of a sudden it's, you know, it's because there's two different copyrights that exist for it. Here's the thing, right? You can do what you want, but we're talking about what to do to be professional, right? And I'm not even tell you to do that because you're knowing the infringing on so on stuff, so. No, but what I'm saying is when they say, well, can I just put everything in one copyright? It's like, 
Oh yeah, I mean, that you know what I'm saying. It's like okay, this is this is information that is supposed to help uh, expand your knowledge, and when you know better, you do better. So, absolutely, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I would have. No, I don't think if you sought professional advice that they would tell you, yeah, go do that. That's that's what I'd say. Because it's not the right thing to do. It's not the right way to do things. It's the way we do things as independent artists. Because we're like, I ain't paying eighty dollars twice. <laughs> I mean, that's what it boils down to. We wouldn't care if it was free. You know what I mean? But the fact that it costs something, it's like, oh lord, you got to get two for each, you know, for each song. But I mean, again, if you want to be fully protected, if you fully believe in your brand, if you fully believe in your property, then you're gonna make sure that it's protected against anybody else. So let me take a look at off the table. I want to like train, change gears for a little bit, but this is going to definitely go to what you're saying. Oh, yeah. So, go ahead. I, I don't know how many of you saw Kanye West and how he put his uh, contracts out on the internet. Right? <laughs> I don't remember that. All right. So I recently learned about it, but back in September 22, Kanye West tweeted all of his... Um, contracts with the record labels 10 contracts 10 agreement he put them all out there Ooh. and he talked about how artists are slaves and like this is going on oh, for too much i do okay. remember that all right so he put all his like those support those contracts and agreements are supposed to be confidential anyway he threw them out there of course of course there's some lawyers who's uh the nerd is kicking in and it's so fun to see what these, what's in these contracts. But I'll say this to say, when when someone or an attorney is reviewing those contracts, what they'll tell you is that there there is an image about being signed, famous, professional, and even a very well-paid artist that you guys think um, is you have a misconception about. So yes, Kanye West got paid millions of dollars in his deals, but guess what else? He owned he that. paid millions of dollars. A lot of that stuff he paid for. The money that they give you, you owe them now. <laughs> so, so you're thinking like, it's a oh, loan. I, yeah, you're thinking like, oh, if I was this famous artist and I was making all this money, um, then I can afford legal. But in actuality, what happens is. They generate all the money from this artist and they say, okay, you'll get this much, but guess what? We're out of the money you generate. You're also going to have to pay legal. You're also going to have to pay uh, pr your, your producer and all it is now the, 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 you don't really get paid from the record labels. They're managing for you. They're, they're, they're saying in order for me to, to do this for you, I have to own your master. You have to give up your song. Right, I own your master recording, so I can send you here and 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 put you on a billboard there. I mean, you can. So when so when the record label owns your master recording, that means you don't get to say, "I don't want my recording on Dancing with the Stars." I don't want my recording in that movie. I don't want right. my recording playing in that club. You don't. You have no say over where it goes or how it's licensed. Correct. You give up everything. So so do you also? But you don't give up. You don't. Do you give up your royalties? That's very tricky. Let me tell you about royalties in the entertainment industry. Okay. <laughs> so when you when an artist signs uh, an agreement, there's something called an advance. The reason you want a lawyer is because you want a law as large of an advance as you can possibly get. Because most of the time, that is all the money you're going to see. Wow. Yeah, it's something called Hollywood accounting. So they'll put some more things in there. They'll say, okay, well, if this many records are sold or if you go here, do this or do that, you get another couple of million, you do this, 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 and that. The artists can do all that. And you know what they're going to say? Well, you you spent too much. You, you spent too much on your producer fees. Uh, that car that we, that limo we had to pick up in, that hairdresser you had that was nice. We always had you looking good. These films or whatever were over budget. And so they start eating away at all of these other things that you're supposed to get before you, uh, all these other fundings you're supposed to get. 
And so most of the time, it'll always be some kind of way that an artist is over budgeted. And so it takes forever for them to get to their royalties. The royalties are in the contract. But do you see royalties? Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you, I mean, you, it's, it's a, I just say it like this, like you have to think about yourself and your craft and your brand. And you have to realize that if music is really important to you, if getting your craft is really out there, if you're serious about this, if you're serious about living, living your lifestyle like this and making money off of it, then you have to treat yourself like a business. And uh, Walmart has legal, Target has legal, Coca-Cola has legal, businesses that make it have legal. Like, you can't, you can't be out here running uncovered. Let me so, ask, sorry. No, you're fine. It's too expensive not to have legal. I'll just say that. Yeah, I understand. What is the, this sounds like a very basic question, but why would somebody... Like, for example, someone was saying Prince and Warner Brother are a perfect case study on artists trying to own their masters. What would Prince, because Prince was already super successful, rich, who knows, maybe the the the, uh, the record company was paid back 10 times over for the success that he has had, right, over the course of his career. What was the benefit of him owning his masters at that point? How, how would that have benefited him? You know, how would that have benefited him? Because... Let's say his music is being used in movies. Wouldn't you say, okay, great, that's more money for me, or it's being licensed in commercials or whatever? Why would why would he want to own his masters? Because if you don't own it, that you're not getting that money. Oh my. Okay. So a lot of times. So when they're licensing it, it doesn't come to you. They're gonna find a reason that you owe if, them. If a company owns the master, the company is licensing licensing it and the company is is earning pay for it they've already told you what we're paying you we're going to pay you whatever your advance was that advance really is money up front from the royalties oh my god so there's no extra money there's no oh this is a sign on bonus and when you get to recoup your advance no it's i'm advancing you money from the royalties and um, what I will do for you is also spend a lot of money on you to be in all these things, but I'm not going to spend my money to put your name, put you on all the radio stations and to um, give you really nice clothes and to have you on TV shows. I'm going to spend my money, but out of the money that you bring into me for me licensing your work, yeah, I'll use that to pay for it, but I'm not going to that for that, That's how it goes. I get it. So that advance is, this is what we're giving you, and you know that they're making probably five, six, seven, eight times that off of your stuff, but you agree to a $2 million deal or a $5 million deal. And they're, they've made 25 million, they've made $30 million. Well, I was thinking the song is never gonna go away, right? Michael Jackson's songs are still, can still, can still be played long after he's dead. Yeah. The, never go away. I can make money off of this for the rest of my life. And I think that I am so proud of this fiction because now we have a lot of woke people and people are really trying to do it on their own. And so when you think about it, you say, okay, well, how can I do this for myself, right? So there's advertising that a, a, a company is gonna give you. Hire someone to advertise and market, right? Um, hire, hire someone to book. Yeah, you can do all these things for yourself. It's a business. You are a business to them. That's it. You're a business. <laughs> and so you have to realize that for yourself right now. Right? And so and so there are is that why there are so many artists that um are are still touring 40, 50 years after their hit songs because that's actually how any more money is gonna come in. So, yeah, so back in the day when there were CD sales, so the, the industry is changing and trying to keep up with technology. So back when there were just CD and record sales, the, the record company made money off of all the sales. The artists didn't get paid for that. So the only way artists make their money is if they go on tour. That's it. So that's why it was all over the world. You see them, like, killing it, or you hear about, oh, this... 
this person got sick on tour and passed out. They, they had to sleep for days. That was the only way they made their money. To keep up the lifestyle that started with the advance. Correct. Whoo, that. So now, um, I think something kind of changed. They don't make as much money from, from tours anymore. Um, but because there's, um, so now you have other things in agreements. They care about how many downloads you get. So with with Apple, Google Play, um, with, with the streaming services or things like that, you know, that kind of changed the game a little bit for artists. So things are, are done a little bit differently now. Um, and then the next wave that we're going to be talking about um, is actually blockchain cryptocurrency. Um, so it's probably going to, might end up putting uh, your streaming platforms, I don't want to call any uh, names, but it, it will put a damper on them because as things, as we move over into digital, um, the digital world with cryptocurrency, they'll be able to create, um, you'll be able to put your songs on blockchains. Like I have no idea what that is. Blockchains? Blockchains. What is that? Ooh, there, that's a conversation for a different day. You're oh, is it? I've never heard of it in my life. You know, you heard of Bitcoin? Yes. All right. So Bitcoin is a coin, but it sits on a blockchain. Okay. So, so there'll be there's blockchains for everything now. The world is changing, but it's being done very quietly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. Okay. So if you could say, let's. Let's let's kind of round this conversation out. This has been such a lovely conversation, by the way. Really? Yes, absolutely. What um, if you could say top three things that? Okay, all right, all right, all right. Should should an independent artist uh? Is it better for them to read up on the law and just figure out how to do their own contracts or just know enough to know that they need an attorney? When do I need an attorney? Do I need an attorney to file my copyrights? Do I need an attorney to do songwriting split sheets? Do I need an attorney to set my stuff up in BMI? Like when, when do, when do I say, okay, I can't do this myself. Now it's time to turn it over to a professional. Um, I think that's going to depend on the person and their comfort level, but definitely with every type of agreement you're going to sign or you sign, I think you definitely need legal for that. There are some attorneys that will say, well, um, copyright, if you're just registering kind of one work, one author, um, and no one else, they may tell you like, hey, I don't want to charge you for that, you know, you can do it yourself, that depends on the attorney. But copyright can become very, um, entangled and very difficult and i think that you even need an attorney then um especially when you're talking about you've been in a studio <laughs> and you've been with someone um there's there's artist producer agreements um all of that is going to um, have copyright entangled with you you know a producer is going to want to have some kind of ownership of it and so a lot of times you can't determine i think you need an attorney even with your copyright and i'll say that because you even want to know do you really want to own this like do you really want the copyright in your name like michael jackson never put any of the copyrights in his name wow it's always in, it's always in his business name you want to know why because every copyright registration is public so i could google sit there every day and google michael jackson's name and i would know his song before it came out so without an attorney to teach you that kind of strategy, you wouldn't know that, right? You would just be registering things. Um, I have an artist who um, wanted to write a book and uh, he was shopping it to Disney, a children's book. And what you want to think about is that you just want to know where are you going with this thing? Because do you really want something in your name? Will the industry or the companies that you're going to, do they want to deal with you know, having the hassle of having something in your name. It's easier to buy a business than it is to buy something from you and your personal self. The last thing I say, you definitely want an attorney um, on the front end is because copyright is a book of ownership. The same way you own a car or a real property like a house, you can do the same things with your intellectual property, your copyright. So it can be passed down, you can put it in a will, you can put it in trust. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a bundle of rights. It's something that you actually own. 
an attorney on the front end can um, show you how to manage your portfolio, especially if it's it's a Prince or Aretha Franklin. You know, you're the next one. Um, you definitely want to know, you know, how do how do you protect your family when you're no longer here? Because those those rights can get passed down um, in in your estate. Wow. Okay, I had one more question, um, but it's gone. Okay. No. <laughs> so I um I had one more thing I want to say. Yeah, go about. ahead. So I'll say like also the reason why you want to um get a you know make sure you have your copyrights and the sound recording as well as your um composition um or sheet music or whatever is because. There'll be different licenses, um, and you want to make sure that you're licensing everything. And um, there are the type of licenses. You have a, a public performance license. If you're using someone's work, you want to think about that um, before you do certain things. So there's theatrical licenses. There's um, public performance licenses, master license, right? So you want to license the master differently from you know, master something else mechanical licenses synchronization licenses and you definitely need an attorney to help you understand well all these licenses the reason they're licenses is because there's someone who's giving you permission to use their copyrightable work um and so you definitely want an attorney to help you understand um copyright whether it's yours and you're going to give it out to someone to use um let them borrow it for a little bit or if you need to borrow someone else's in your plays performances um or even when you are um, going on tour, um, there's nothing wrong with covers, but if, if it's going to be recorded or even streamed live, then you need different licenses for that. Awesome. So technically, if I'm doing a live stream and I'm paying and, and, and I'm charging for it and it's covers, technically there should be some licenses because it's interesting. That's really good information. So in closing, you guys, I have pinned her contact information um, to, I'm on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. The, the, uh, the link is there. She is clearly a wealth of information and all of that good stuff, very competent and passionate about entertainment law. So this was such, um, yes, I, somebody's asking me if you have, and yes, I believe it should be in the description actually. So the link in the description is actually where you can keep in contact with me. So basically, if you can click on that link, it's going to take you to a page ah. where you submit your name and email address and subscribe. Um, and I will keep in contact with you. But you can also find me if you want to book a link to a consulting session. Um, you definitely want to um, find me on Instagram. There is a consultant link. Now, that won't be as your attorney, but a lot of times I get questions from um, entertainers asking me, what should I do? How should I do this? How should I navigate this? And they basically need a blueprint or a plan, figuring out how to navigate the industry. Um, um, so if that's something you're interested in, you can find me at I am Marcia Scott on Facebook as well as Instagram and the links will be um, on my Instagram page. Like my page please. Um yeah. and you in the bio for that. Um and then on top of that um I have a few contract templates. Um they're also on my Instagram page at um it's GPD get get PD, GPD store or something like that. But you'll see it. It's the link is there. Um and if you're looking for some sample contract templates, um just keep checking back. I'll be adding some more. Um but right now there is a non disclosure agreement as well as a location agreement um that is useful for artists. Um so again if you are um, trying to talk with someone about your idea or things that you want to do with them. If you're saying, hey, I want to engage in the business of doing something with you, whether it's writing or singing, um, when you're having those initial conversations, you want to have that um, NDA um, on hand, as well as location agreement. A lot of times we're filming while we're singing and we go to commercial locations, like sometimes they're Airbnb, sometimes they're hotels. And we need permission to record on these people's properties. So you definitely need a location agreement. Um, 
because there may be intellectual properties hanging on the walls. So I'll give you this last fun fact. I'm sorry, I'm taking up a lot of time, but I just want to let you know why this is important. So while at the Library of Congress, um, I actually brought Mary Mary to the Library of Congress to be recognized. Um, and we gave them the Daniel A.P. Murray's Award. Well, I helped facilitate a lot of the contracts um, for WeTV, so it was filmed um, um, on WeTV, and a part of that was the location agreement. At the Library of Congress, because it's the, it houses the U.S. Um, copyright, they keep a lot of important work there. And so almost everything on the wall is, is, is very, very rare and unique work even statutes within the library. And so one thing that we told WeTV was that they cannot record the photos on the wall. They could only shoot Mary Mary inside of specific rooms, the green room, the, the room where they were getting their, uh, the auditorium where they were getting their, uh, their award, and outside. So because of that, that's all in the location agreement. Like, that somebody else's copyrightable work and they could not air that on TV. They couldn't reproduce an image of it. Um, and so you definitely just want permission because if you are sharing, um, you know, your performances or just creating your music videos, um, you, you want an agreement to say, I have the right to be here to record the, everything that you have in the area. Um, so. That's my last tidbit, and thank you, Delisa. I appreciate you having me. Um, it was it was great. Uh, we definitely couldn't get into everything tonight. Um, you know, it's 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 a big topic. It's a big area, and I um, mean, I'd love to come home again if you'd have me. Heck and yeah! Good. This was awesome. Thank you so much. And guys, uh, you know, this is part of the develop the artist within you. I I'm doing. You know, I really want to equip and empower independent artists. And so um, I have developed a, an artist development program called Develop the Artist Within You, where we um, basically have resources available and we've pulled together some really amazing professionals to work with singers and independent artists so that they can navigate their own careers and be successful and be protected. And again, like I've, I've said, feel really empowered. Um, our tagline is, is, is perfect your voice, build your brand. And part of building your brand is uh, being knowledgeable. And when you know better, you do better. So hopefully this um, this discussion has given you, I hate to say some great tips, but, but really some great knowledge just kind of armed you a little bit more so that you can navigate your careers. And thank you so much, Margie, for coming. And I'm definitely gonna have you back again. My pleasure. Bye. All right. Have a great night. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for watching.